Well, it's not windy in the city. It's plus 10 though. Beautiful day. Uh, I'm more stressed out about Ren's vet visit than I thought I'd be. I feel pretty anxious, so I'm gonna try to enjoy myself while I wait and keep busy and walk around. Um, I've been in this area before in Calgary. Um, I don't know where the heck I'm at. Ninth Street East, Ninth Avenue Southeast, or something. Uh, yeah, put on that fresh. Beer is good. Beer, beer is good, right? Uh, I just came to see that. Really, There's not a lot of cool stuff that I can see. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm all, I'm all flustered and stuff. Uh, there's a record store I'm going to go to. I don't really have funds to spend, but uh, there's a record store and two bookstores just within like a three block radius of each other. So I thought I'd come here and uh, there's some UCDs at that record store as well. And obviously used books and it's like if I spend 10 bucks, then I think that'll be okay. It's hard to kill this amount of time uh, cheaply. <laughs> Uh, cause I might have like five hours of waiting ahead of me and I'm really unsure. It just depends on when they call me to come pick Ren up. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could just walk and sit, uh, I could sit in the, the good thing is that it's warm enough. Like I actually could do a fair amount of walking and not spend any money and just like go in and out of some places and check out some, some rad art. But, uh, yeah, I figured I may as well see if I can pick up a CD or two for, for on the cheap and uh there we go there's record land right there it's a beautiful store squat um, I'm just on the highway just uh, past Claire's home and uh, <clears throat> I'll give you an update about Ren's vet visit later but right now man I haven't driven on the highway at night for so long because I do the best I can to avoid it and the farthest I've generally traveled in I don't know how many years now um, by road I mean like road trip by car is just to Lethbridge and Saskatoon Lethbridge to Saskatoon and back that's like a seven hour trip even if you have a stop in there so um, it's really easy to is this a third one up here oh my goodness I think this is a third um, anyway yeah this is the third semi that is tipped over that I've seen in five minutes um, yep yeah, there it is there's the third one. Jeez. I shouldn't say there's the third one. There's a third one. In five minutes. Um, it was really, really windy on the way up here. And there's... In between, like... Uh, in between... Claire's home and Lethbridge. There's a bunch of zones that have, like, signs that talk about, like... Wind gusts. Like, they're crazy wind gusts. And, like, be careful. And, like... There's like signage for, for that issue, but it was also crazy windy today on top of it. 
Um, I don't know when, like, that's a thing. They, I don't know how long those have been there because it's not that windy right now. Like, it is windy, but not like it was earlier. Like, I'm not feeling it the same way. However, I'm obviously in a, in a car that is low to the ground, um, a little more aerodynamic than, than semis with their trailers. But, yeah, um, I had to, like, stop and clean off my headlights, um, because... I just, they were so dirty. Like there was so much slush and stuff um, that yeah, I was just, I had to clean my windshield all the time. Like I had to buy more windshield wiper fluid today. And it was just like, yeah, uh, my car is incredibly dirty. I had to like clean my windows and everything else. But yeah, I, I realized once I got onto the highway and it got dark, uh, well, it was dark when I left Calgary. Um, it was left a little bit after five, 5.30 maybe. And, uh, yeah, I recognized, like, okay, when I can stop, then, like, the very soonest town, like, um, which was Nanton, I was like, I need to pull over, I need to wipe down my headlights, I need to clean that off, because it, it's harder to see, and I'm, like, driving at night, and I, it's been a long time since I've done that, but, um, the thing, too, it was just terrifying, was, like, not terrifying, that's hyperbole, but, like, I turned my brights on for a second um, because I was able to and when I turned my brights on I saw a semi in the ditch like on its side tipped over in the ditch it didn't that was the first one that I saw because it didn't have um, its hazards on and I was like holy smokes the thing was that there was a truck just like five minutes before that like an emergency vehicle that was like speeding i don't know what it looked like highway patrol type thing like it was like a truck truck um and there wasn't an ambulance or anything else or police like it wasn't a police vehicle either i don't really know um but it had like red lights flashing and it was just going like i don't know over 120 for sure um and i didn't see it at either of those locations there uh, any of those locations but yeah i turned on my brights so and then i saw the semi and then a minute later there was one in there was there was a there was one again in the in the meridian there tipped over but it has hazards and then a minute after that another one with hazards on i'm like i wonder how many i didn't see um i wonder how many of them there are and it's just i don't know man this highway with the wind is just just something else just brutal oh my goodness here's another one i can barely you're not going to be able to see it at all but jeez FedEx. It's a double trailer. I saw a FedEx double trailer on the way up to Calgary. Um, so I don't know if that's the same one, but that was a double and that's in the ditch too. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, as much as I want a vehicle that suits my lifestyle a little more, like a, like a, like an SUV, um, because of mountain biking or even carrying art or dog or just road trips, whatever that's one thing that i'm like man in this area of the prairies with the wind um i'm i'm glad that i have this vehicle that i have because even though it will push me around a bit um i'm lower to the ground and like i don't feel it the same way even even an suv um would would feel it and and i've driven you know like uh mitsubishi outlander in in the lethbridge area uh, with that wind and even that like versus my Jetta. There's a difference Anyway, uh, man, this is something else Well it's the day after the vet and uh, Ren's got got good energy um, I stayed with her today just because she was coming off the sedative and stuff um, but she seemed to do well and uh, her appetite is coming back and her energy is coming back, so that's good. Um, yeah, I gave her a bath before I realized where her energy was at, and I wish that I gave her a bath after we decided to go for a walk. But because her energy is is up there, and uh, yesterday she spent so much time in the car and then in a crate at the vet, and then, you know, just like cooped up and then on the sedative at home. Oh. What are you doing, pup? Come on, let's go. Um, yeah, I decided, you know, it would be a good time to uh, take her for a walk today. 
Uh, I'm working tomorrow all day, so she'll end up being alone for the day, which is is always sad. Um, it'd be better if she was just able to be out of her kennel, but like her kennel's a decent size. Like she can stand up in it, she can stretch out if she wants, but it's not like she can walk around really. So um, I mean, she could walk in really small circles, like tiny ones, <laughs> but she still chews stuff too much. So hopefully we'll work on that and she'll get better with that. And then when she's at home alone, at least she has more space and kind of uh, come and go. She pleases in the upstairs anyway. Uh, anyway, anyway, taking her for a walk, but wanted to keep it light. No wrestling today, so not going where the other dogs are. And uh, kind of taking things from there. Maybe we'll get out to the dog park or at least a main area of an off-leash park where there will be dogs and uh, maybe we'll do that Friday I don't know but yeah I realize I never updated with um, what they said at the vet so unfortunately um, the hip dysplasia is for sure they said that was for certain and good news right now though is because she's young um, that that she might grow some scar tissue there so that it doesn't keep like popping at a joint because right now like her just her hips like when you put her your hands on her hips you can feel them like pop in and out of joint especially the left side um but it seems like there's yeah dysplasia there evidence of that in the x-rays that's really very clear uh on both both hips there, um, or both sides of the hips. Um, yeah, so that's not good, but <laughs> it's, it's possible that, um, cause the vet was saying like, she's not even a year yet, you know, like she's only nine months, like let's give it a little bit. And it doesn't seem to be slowing her down any. It doesn't seem to be giving her discomfort or any lameness uh, or limp or, or anything. Like she's fine on stairs and stuff, it seems. So, um, yeah, uh, the vet said to just kind of, we're not going to have any type of treatment plan or anything for that right now. Um, although she said, you know, there are surgeries available for that. There's also like more conservative measures is what she called them. Um, other things that could possibly be done. Now, the reason she initially was going in was for that limp. Um, and the vet told me that it could take up to six months for just a regular soft tissue damage um, injury to fully heal. And so just kind of what we were doing, which was like exercising her slowly and like keeping her kind of like quiet and not as, not as high impact with her activities. Um, and then working back up, like that that's, you know, kind of all you can do is just kind of like, okay, well she seems to be fine. And then you work back up. And then once you realize you push too far, then you gotta back off again, unfortunately. Because um, you don't want to keep re-injuring over and over and over again. But she doesn't have anything permanent. Like, her limp has gone completely away now for short periods of time. What do you think, then? What do you get in the way of both? What do you get in? Let's go! Um, so, yeah. The elbow dysplasia thing. Um, they're waiting on the CT scan uh, to kind of see how bad it is um but based off the initial reading there was a very quick reading but not by the radiologist by the vet and she said like i'm no radiologist so um she does see some type of i don't know what she called it it wasn't a growth or a mass that's not but she said like a like hardness i guess and that would be from like cartilage and bone that has grown um, but is brittle, and that's kind of the... There's apparently four different types of dysplasia that she could have, or like that, that dogs can get there. And the vet ruled out the first three, like, based off the x-rays, not even from the CT scan. And she was like, yeah, it's none of those three, this is the one it is. If she has any at all, this is what it's going to be. And so, uh, she said, again, there's more conservative measures there. It doesn't have to go to surgery right away. Uh, she also said... Ren, come. She also said that 
when it comes to the elbows, there's no specific, she, there's no cure, she said. There's no cure for it. Like with hip dysplasia, you could just like replace certain joints or whatever, or like there's a hip replacement that she could get, right? Um, that those things are like established. Man, this is, this is water. Um, that those things are established and that they know they know kind of the outcome of those things and what would be best but when it comes to the elbows they don't know for sure yet there's no like uh, consensus or pr anything proven that's like hey this is the one this is the go-to surgery we do and it's been proven to be the best option that there's like a bunch of different options and they keep trying new things and nothing yet has been like the definitive go-to option uh, to relieve discomfort there and kind of help, I guess, like, like to be a certain proven method of, of assistance there. Uh, she said there's other things you could do that like, just giving your dog glucosamine, like specifically for them, uh, things like that that can help and some some people go that route and it doesn't do anything and some people go that route and it's amazing and it's like there's no harm in giving her glucosamine um but there's some other methods that like oh if you try this like these are possible outcomes or, or negative side effects or whatever right so trying experimental stuff um you know there's possible negative consequences to some of that stuff anyway that's where she's at uh we don't have a treatment plan yet we're gonna get that in the next couple days but well she's pooping uh, she's happy <laughs> she's happy and she's at home and she's you know she's especially right now you know she's where she likes to be so hopefully um, whatever those options are are not too crazy financially and won't have like a crazy recovery I don't know. I just want her to be at her best, you know? I just want her to enjoy life and uh, to just kind of be at her 100% best all the time. Because one of the things that the vet mentioned was like, you know, a change in lifestyle is just maybe going to have to be what happens. Possibly that like just she can't do high impact activities or else that will put a strain on, on her elbows and, and make the situation worse, right? And so, um, yeah. Going down this path is pretty low impact for her because she doesn't have a bunch of rocks and junk to jump off of. Like, when we go the other way, off the trail at Popson. Uh, or off the path and onto a trail, I should say. Anyway, I've rambled enough about this pup, but that is the update on Wren. So, wrapping up the vlog, um, this past week, there's only two reviews. Um, one is on a comic called Fatal. Um, it was pretty good. It was a pretty short run. Um, <clears throat> and I have the two deluxe hardcover versions that I talk about, uh, or editions, I should say. And then also uh, Needful Things by Stephen King. Um, I've read it twice, and I really enjoy it. And it's definitely a book that I suggest to people who are new to Stephen King. And you could watch or listen to that review to find out why. So there's those two reviews and then one conversation about accepting things and moving on, which is incredibly basic stuff, but hard in practice for me. <laughs>